because you're surrendered to whatever way it goes and you're okay with it. So whichever direction it goes, if it goes your way, you're extremely happy. That's fantastic. But if it doesn't go your way, you're completely surrendered to it too because you're trusting that the greater force knows better. Then how do you suffer? Can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. So the example that you gave, you know, you, you were in the desert. I love, it was a great example of trusting and the universe took care of you with the outcome that was a desirable outcome. But let's say I, uh, let's say I'm married, I'm 70, 80 years old and I'm obese and my husband just had a surgery and he's supposed to be able to walk and take care of himself and he's discharged from the hospital and he can't walk and I'm obese and I can't pick him up to take him to the bathroom. I can't even turn him over in bed so that I can change him. Right. Um, and then how can you not suffer when you see someone you love uh, suffering? And uh, yeah, I just, right. you know, it's like when you love people, you, our, our, you know, our fear or worry comes from, uh, you know, that you would like uh, for someone you love not to suffer. Yeah, of course. I don't want people I love not to suffer. Or anyone, yeah. I mean, of course. I, I worry I, about my neighbor that, you know, he can't take care of himself or something. Right. I want, yeah. Well, I have, a, I have an elderly mother. She's 93 years old. Uh, her sister, she's 89. Um, I have a bunch of older people around me that they have different health issues, different things going on. And her close, her next, her other sister who was a year younger just died a couple months ago. So my mom is a little bit suffering from the fact that her sister died because they used to talk to each other on the phone for an hour, two hours a day. Um, yeah, I don't want to see them suffering, but they do. Of course, I don't want them to suffer. You don't want people you love to suffer, but suffering happens. I can't do anything about it. They have to live their dharma. They have to live their life. Yeah. They have so, to go okay. they have to go through their spiritual evolution and okay. to their life's teachings. And whatever God wants them to experience in this life, I can't change I don't have the power to change that. Okay. So what I can do what I do is I hold space for them. Yeah. I love them. I don't judge them. I can see their pitfalls. I can see where they're coming short and how they keep suffering from the lack of understanding of the existence or just simply getting old and having an old body. The body is designed to get old, decay, and die. That's the design of this body. Nobody said you're going to come to this life and you're going to have a Superman body all the way to the end. This body from the moment that it is born is old. That's the part of this deal okay. of this dimension. So the trust is really about accepting the trust is the karma everyone's karma and that we all have yes. to go through what we have to go through exactly you're surrendering to it and you're accepting it and in that surrender resistance begin to disappear you're not okay. resisting you're surrendering to what is 
And in that surrendering, the magic begin to reveal itself. Something outside of our vision, outside of what we feel and touch, begin to appear mysteriously. And that thing takes over. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying. I mean, when you're sensitive, it's, yeah, it's not too thorough, but I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a fine line. It is in so many ways very scary to let go, to come to that. You have yeah. touched it. I know you've touched it. I know you're aware of it. I've, you've seen it before. But to live in it continuously, to dive into it and to surrender into it, it does require a jump into this other level. And for that, it requires a certain way of emptiness to let go of our ideas. Our ideas, our concepts are what are holding us back. These ideas we have, these concepts that we have, that we've been conditioned to believe in, to see things from that point of view, is what's holding us back. So that's why I keep emphasizing, talking about being silent. Being silent means what? This means you have no, you're not thinking. When you're not thinking, it means what? Means now you're not holding any ideas in your mind. There's no concept, no ideas. You systematically train yourself to come to this place of not knowing anything. I don't know. I have no idea. If you ask me what's going to happen next year, next month, and how are you going to live your life? How are you going to make a living? What's going to happen to you? I have no idea. I have no idea what is going to happen to what I'm doing, my mission, the work I do, my life, where I'm going to be living, any of it. I know that anything can change at any moment. Everything that I am, I position myself that it's working so well right now can change in a second. I can lose everything in a second. Everything can change at any moment to something else. Nothing is solid. And I don't know anything. And I'm not just saying this to be cute or cool or sound spiritual. It's the truth. The entire situation that you have that you feel like it's so solid and it's so real and that's what it is and that's your reality, whether it's hell and it's suffering or whether it's cool and groovy can change in a second. All of it can go upside down. Even though you've done everything right. Look at the pandemic. Look at the situation that we're in right now. Who thought in December of 2019 that the world will go upside down, it will be frozen. A lot of the businesses, all of the world will be shut down and a lot of them are gonna go bankrupt. Nobody thought about it. Who thought about a few months ago that we won't even be able to travel? 